Good morning Endeavour and a very happy Thursday to you. We'll be joining our class novel at chapter 8 where Prometheus has just landed in Eden City and he's made his quite an impression, I would say, in the Storm Inn. Let's see what happens next. The Storm Inn, Eden City. At last the two halves of our story have come together and not before time. That rather ugly reader with a face like a potato says, well, let me tell you, potato face, everything comes to those who wait, or whatever it is that waits, whatever. If you haven't guessed who walked through those swinging doors, you haven't been paying attention. Because remember, as we left it last time, the doors opened. Uncle Edward and I stepped through the door of the storm in and saw a curious sight. A man with a beard sat at a table with a spluttering pipe in his mouth and a glass of ale in front of him. Nothing up there. The ugly auburn girl with inner beauty and rat-tailed hair stood with a bucket of sawdust in her hand. Nothing odd there either. A man lay on the floor in a, the beer-soaked, blood-stained sawdust. Did I mention the blood-stains? There were lots of fights at the storm in. They didn't bother to mop up the blood or sweep the, saw, the stained sawdust. They just scattered clean sawdust on top of it. Did you know that the Romans did the same sort of thing in their blood-soaked arenas? Gladiators bled and died, servants scattered fresh sand over the gory pools and they carried on. Uncle Edward told me that. I wish he hadn't. He was tall and handsome, though his hair was a little too long. He had muscles like a cart horse. Nothing odd there. But then he was dressed in a white tunic and a pair of swan feather wings lay by his side. I think that's a bit odd, don't you? He's fainted, the girl said. I put my hand to my mouth in shock. <gasps> oh no, don't tell me he saw your face without your bucket on your head, I cried. There is an old Greek legend about a woman called Medusa. She had snakes instead of hair. Her look could turn you to stone. That's just what January Storm looked like at that moment. I offered him some dinner, she spat. I covered my eyes with my hands in horror. Ah, poor man. The thought of your cooking is enough to make any man ill. I had only known January for a day, but already we had learned to loathe one another. Please turn your bad breath the other way, she snarled. It's burning my hair. The last time I saw something with hair like that... I was eating a banana, I said with a smile. You're so ugly, you just walk into a room and the mirrors run and hide, she said. Children, children, Uncle Edward shouted. Enough, we have a sick young man here. Let's see if we can help him. He reached over to the table and picked up the ale and he poured it all over the young man's face. The man with the beard wailed. That's my beard, cost me, that's my beard. Cost me good money, that beard did. What am I going to drink? Uncle probably saved your life, I muttered. The stormy nail is probably poison, if it's as foul as the bar girl. January was about to say something spiteful when the young man moaned softly. Mm. He stirred and looked around. Good evening, sir, Uncle Edward said, sweeping his hat off his head with a sweep. Did I mention he did everything with a sweep? I did. Oh, sorry. I, I'm still new to this writing stuff, so I'm bound to make the odd mistake here and there. Edward Slaughter, actor, comedian and poet at your service. I'm Prometheus, the young man said, sitting up. A fine ancient name, Uncle Edward said, the name of a Greek god, if I'm not mistaken. Half god, half human, the young man said. A titan, really. Uncle Edward is an expert on Greek legends, I said. My friends call me Theus, he said. I don't want to use the, the, the name Prometheus here. I, I don't want my hunter to track me down. He's just out of prison, January explained. Served 200 days for his evil crimes. They robbed him of everything when he left jail, even his clothes. We were just going to dress him in Big Bill's clothes, she said. Poor Bill, Uncle Edward sighed. Poor Bill, I agreed. He died after eating your stew last night, didn't he? I asked. He died because he got in a fight outside, January said. I shrugged. All I'm saying is it's odd. He ate your stew and died soon after. You're not a cook, you're an assassin. January's face turned as red as her hair and nearly as dirty. And all I'm saying is... How would you like this bucket of sawdust smacked around your ears? I stepped back. She stepped forward. I could hardly miss those ears, could I? You could swat flies with those ears. There are plenty of flies in here to swat, I teased. Why don't you put your teeth in backwards and bite yourself, she said, and she raised her bucket. Be silent, you dingle-brained, chump-headed children, Uncle Edward ordered. I will lock you in a cupboard together and throw away the key. Ugh, January cried with a curl of her nose. It's what they call a Roman nose. It's roaming all over her face. Ugh, I agreed, but I fell silent. Now, January, I will take young Theus up to our room and dress him in Big Bill's clothes. 
Jim and I will get ourselves ready for this evening's show, put the young man's wings under the stage, we'll collect the coffin from there later. Thea struggled to his feet. I promised to help Miss January with the cleaning, I need to repay her for the suit. Uncle Edward shook his head. Don't worry about that, my boy, I've got a job for a jailbird like you. I'm not really a bird, Thea said. I, I just borrowed these wings for my dad. Uncle Edward waved his words aside. I need a strong boy like you to do a little carrying. Are you with us? Theus bowed his head. I'd be honoured to be of help, he said. But first we have to dress properly. Hurry, we haven't got a lot of time. We don't start the show until 11 o'clock, January said. You've plenty of time. Ah, we have the honour of doing a show for Mr George Mucklethrift this evening. We will, be retur we will return after the show and entertain your guests, he promised. We had to entertain the storming crowd to pay for our room, of course. Otherwise, we would get out of town with a Mucklefrid loot as soon as we could. Maybe we should have done that and all the trouble of hanging about wouldn't have happened. He led Theus upstairs and climbed up to our room above. The cockroaches would just have to make room for big Theus, poor things. January's storm gave a huge sigh. Oh my, oh my, oh my. I've always wanted to see inside a great house like Mucklethrift Manor, she drooled. Will you take me with you, she said to me. We're working, I said, doing a show, I added, though our real work was robbery, as you know. You could take me with you. Take you with us? Like a date, you could take me out. Ha! I sneered, even the tide wouldn't take you out. I was pleased to have the last word. I turned my back. Big mistake. A moment later, a sawdust bucket flattened my ear to my skull. Ouch. Hope you enjoyed that endeavour. Tomorrow we rejoin the story, chapter nine, to find out what happens next. Have a great day. See you tomorrow.